All right, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Crypto, Coffee and Lo-Fi. Before we get started, a special thanks to Delta Exchange for sponsoring this series. I have been AFK for a little bit now. I know I said in the previous episode that I would be a little bit more consistent with these episodes, but um, I haven't had much of a higher time frame read on the market, so um, I really didn't want to waste anyone's time and I didn't want to put out any ideas that I didn't have confidence in. But um, I'm seeing a few setups here that I am confident in. So we'll go over that. I do want to start off with a fresh chart. Um, but if you are new here, I have a bunch of free tutorials. And I think this is like the 83rd or 84th episode of the series. So feel free to go back and watch those episodes if you do want to know more about the strategy. But I do have strategy PDF files and videos. And you can find a link to that in the description as well as the indicator here. So the idea behind the indicator is that it shows exactly how I would manually execute the strategy on the chart. So, all right, let's get stuck into it. First chart. So if you don't know the strategy and you aren't, you have never seen me draw up this pattern, go back and watch some previous videos. This might be a bit of a lengthy one, so I don't want to um, increase the length of the video by explaining the strategy. So we have a sweep here and we have a sweep right there. So you can see we took out all of these lows. So we have a sweep and then we have a break in structure. This is the high that was responsible for taking the low. So breaking above right here is the first sign that buyers are stepping into the market. The next thing that we need to see is some manipulation inside of this zone. So what do I mean by manip manipulation? First, I look for accumulation. So if I'm looking for a long, I'll look for the accumulation. So something like this. I then look for the break above the high that was responsible for taking the low. Once I get that, I then wait for liquidity to build inside of this range or just above. Once that does build, I wait for the liquidity to be taken. And then I look for the pattern to form again. And essentially what this is telling me is that the larger players in the markets, not necessarily market makers. I know a lot of people think that, but I don't think it's not market makers trying to enter these positions. So I wait for the liquidity to be taken. Once it is taken, I then look for the footprint of the big buyers entering the market again. So that's what we got right here. And you'll see this pattern in a few of the other charts that I'm pointing out here in a sec. So, and then returning to the range, sweeping out the low and then breaking above the high. Now we are inside this range again. We have taken a bunch of lows. Now entering long here is extremely risky but in my opinion, entering swing shorts is just as risky. So we are at higher time frame support. We are sitting inside of an area of higher time frame accumulation. So to me, I'm that means I should long. And I'm just going to follow my system regardless of how of what everyone else kind of thinks, right? So I'm long right here. I was in a swing position. A little bit further up but i closed that like i said in the previous episode but now that we've taken out all these lows like i said we may do in the previous episodes for the last couple of weeks now that we've taken out these lows i have entered long and i will be looking for accumulation here so i don't think this is the very low but it may might well be but i'm thinking we get something like this if we get something like that take out this low and then break up and then i can start looking for day trading opportunities now where would i target in a swing long position we swept out that high and that high and then breaking below the low that was responsible for taking that high. Since this down leg, we haven't yet really tested it and we have just left a bunch of equal highs above. Now, I'm not telling all of you to go and jump into fucking long positions. I'm just telling you, my system is telling me to long. Am I right 100% of the time? Fuck no, I'm not. I, I, there's no way. Okay, I'm wrong a, long, a lot of the time. In fact, I'm wrong more than I am right. But the point is, is that when I win, I win more than what I lose. So I have statistics telling me that I should make a decision. And rather than getting my emotions involved, I'm going to follow that process. So I've entered the swing long. Of course, we could still dump. So we could come down and take this low. But in my mind, we're still sitting at support. And now is not the time to be looking for swing shorts, in my opinion. If we do break down below these lows and continue to distribute, then we may be able to look for swing shorts. But for now, until these accumulation levels have started to break, uh, swing longs are the play, in my opinion. So a similar story here on ETH. 
Dum. Taking out that low, breaking above the high. Taking out that low, breaking above the high. So we didn't quite get a retest. Okay. But if Bitcoin does shoot up here, then obviously Ethereum's going to follow. But like I said in the previous chart, I think we may get one more leg down. So if we get a move below these lows and some reaccumulation, I'll jump in. And just like Bitcoin, rather than targeting all time highs, because I think that's ridiculous, I think if we do get a jump up from here, it may just well be a retrace. So if I am just expecting a retrace, then I should target something that lies inside of the range. So here we have a sweep of a high, then breaking below the low that's responsible for taking that high. Since the breakdown, we haven't yet retested it. So if we do start to accumulate here and I am only expecting a retrace, then this is the obvious objective. Now, if we reach into this zone and we don't start to drop off like this, then I think obviously we can head higher, taking out this high. But for now, this is the game plan, all right? I've entered a small position on SPX here. So taking out all of these equal lows, breaking above the highs responsible for taking those lows. And then yesterday, FOMC, we see equal lows forming here. Now, to me, this looks like obvious bait. I mean, I put this in line with Bitcoin, Ethereum, DXY, and Euro. To me, I'm seeing plenty of opportunities to short the dollar at around these levels at least. Everyone's going long in this zone. We're all the way up here. People are looking for swing longs today. Anyone that got long in this whole leg up here, where's their stop going to be below these lows? So all I'm doing now is going to be looking for evidence that the bigger players are starting to accumulate and using the liquidity below here. If that's the case, then we should see a leg up. Where's the most obvious objective? All of these equal highs resting above. Again, I'm not telling everyone to go long. I'm just saying like, this is my uh, reasoning here. So also take a look at this. We're sitting right at resistance on the daily, right? And you're telling me right at resistance, we're about to see a perfect bull flag form. And then we continue to leg up. We, we may well do that. Like I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying this does seem, everything is kind of correlating to me um, that the dollar is going to have a fake out to the upside. Okay, and this is how I'm playing it. So we could drop off here, but what I would rather is spending another day or so up in this range and then seeing some distribution. If we get that, think about it. If you're a player that's entering the breakout of this bull flag, right? Where are your stops going to be below this low? So I think if we do get some distribution above this zone right here, and I think the next destination for us is below this low, once we reach into the low, if we get some more accumulation, then we can continue the dollar bull run. All right. If we don't get the accumulation, then obviously we head down and everything ends up going into a massive bull cycle. But I think this is the most uh, likely scenario to play out. Of course, like I said, we could just continue up. Same thing with Euro. When you're looking at trading bull flags and when you're looking at, you know, getting short in general, you really shouldn't be looking to get short into support. Does that mean that we can't wick down past support and take everyone out? No, what I'm saying is, is that generally speaking, when we're reaching into support and everyone's scared that it's breaking, what you should be doing rather than looking for shorts is looking for long opportunities, not necessarily for a full trend change, but looking for swing shorts or even scalp shorts at support can get a little bit iffy. So you can see here on Euro, taking out this low, breaking above the high, and we're reaching into this zone here. We very well could take this low. I'm not trading this one personally, it's just gonna be used as confluence. So keeping that in mind, what I'm hoping for to support my bull case would be a fake breakout of this lower time frame flag that we have here, followed by some more accumulation. And hopefully that lines up with the dollar as well. If we get that, then expecting a retrace to the upside. Been going for nine minutes. All right, I think that pretty much covers everything. Um, yeah, I'm, I am looking to take longs here. We're at support. It just makes sense. If you are interested in anything that I'm explaining here or the way that I'm drawing up the charts, click the link in the description below. Pick up a copy of the strategy. There's over 500 people in the Discord all trading the same thing. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, there is a, there's like, it's like 150 free videos on my YouTube. So feel free to go check that out or send me a message on Twitter. I'm happy to help. 
All right, guys, best of luck. Have a good one. Bye.